Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, LeCue Cares event. Um, I'm happy to be here uh, to discuss innovative ways to do virtual field trips with all of you. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, one thing I think is so great about virtual field trips, whether you're in a distance learning setting or a regular setting, is it helps you to uh, collapse the walls of your classroom. And it allows kids who don't have a lot of experiences outside of where they immediately live actually um, get a chance to see and uh, experience things they wouldn't normally do. So um, in this presentation, I'm going to go through a whole bunch of uh, different uh, ideas and links and thoughts uh, with you on how to use virtual field trips. Uh, this slide deck with all of the active links are also included on the Look You Cares page. So please feel free to use it, share it, um, whatever you need to. Um, so let's get started. So one thing that's great about virtual field trips is that your students can have adventures from all around the world, not just in the small community or the large community that they live in. They're able to experience um, things from around the world, experience uh, museums, experience uh, history, experience all kind of items that they wouldn't normally be able to see or do. So one of the first things that um, is great for you to do is actually just literally travel to any destination. So if you travel to a destination, here's a, a couple of, of great things that you can do with your students. Like for example, this little screenshot here shows you just different things that you can show your students and take them around the world and be very comfortable at the same time. Like for example, visiting Hawaiian volcanoes or visiting the mountains or visiting places that they're not able to actually visit um, in the real world, not only just due to what we're experiencing with COVID right now, but also due to the fact that uh, some students just can't afford it. So they actually get the opportunity to see things that are outside of their just small uh, world. So virtual trip, real trips are really great ways to expose your students to all these different experiences. Um, Skype is a great way of doing it, and the educational uh, Skype uh, website will get you uh, sort of hooked up with different events that are going on. It'll show you um, ways that you can search, uh, things you can do, uh, like a mystery Skype, get a guest speaker in your classroom, all these types of really great things. Other things like uh, these big companies like Skype and, and, and different ones like that can bring in people like Dr. Jane Goodall and, and have your kids experience something and, and, and even talk to some of these folks that they wouldn't normally be able to, to do. Um, one thing that is linked here is a bunch of different uh, virtual field trips that are already done, like I said, by these larger companies. Uh, we've used a lot of Scholastic virtual field trips in our district just because they're so well done, so well laid out. Usually they have lesson plans that go with them. Uh, most of the time they are not uh, connected with any type of a price. It's just a, a resource that they're allowed and give or, or, or give to you as a, a company. So this is a good one to look into. Discovery is also a great one, Discovery Education. We all know and have had experience with Discovery Education. Um, and it takes you into a variety of um, different places. Here's an example of art and history in the White House. Dot Day was just this week. Um, so if you keep up with these different uh, sites, they, all, they will actually keep you up with some of your newer things. Also, what I love about these is they give you uh, actual virtual communities to be involved with, other educators to talk with, and actually learn from. So think about exploring some of the different virtual field trips that they already have out there that are already ex established for you. Uh, here are uh, some links to some virtual field trip sites that uh, I've used in the past, we've used in our uh, district. 
Some of them are fun. Some of them are very educational. Uh, some simple things like I keep thinking about like our really lower elementary kids and early childhood kids that do a lot of info things on forms and that kind of stuff. I love this website just because it's simple yet it exposes kids to things that we're not used to seeing. Um, so for example, it's going to give you access to go to an apple orchard or to go to a pig farm, or to go to different places that these kids would normally experience wherever they're at. Um, so that's a, that's a great link. Um, another one is like the M&M factory, uh, going to Mount Vernon. How many of us are going to actually ever get a chance to go to the Great Wall of China? So uh, on this one, they, you, like, you can see here, they provide all kinds of stuff travel guide for you. You can actually go in and start visiting the and touring uh, the Great Wall of China. Uh, a lot of these have 360 views, um, have views where you can proceed and walk forward. As you can see here, I'm doing um, and, and you can really get a good idea of what these places look like and really literally look I feel like you can walk on the Great Wall of China and then look around. So these are really great sites for the kids to explore, especially if they're reading a story, say, on China about the Great Wall and may not necessarily have um, any experience and know what that means. And a lot of these cases, you'll see this little icon down here, which allows you to connect with like virtual reality glasses, uh, Google Expedition glasses, things like that. Uh, so check a bunch of these out. Uh, uh, the other thing that's great about a bunch of these, especially like the Monterey Bay Aquarium, they have um, webcams, live webcams where kids can observe the animals, uh, that type of thing. So another great way to do a virtual field trip is to visit a museum. Uh, I love this because it, it really provides you with a lot of great resources. Uh, for example, we went on a school trip one time to the Louvre in Paris, which is just amazing. But how many of us really get a chance to do that so that the, these actually take you in to those places and allows you to see uh, some of those things like the Smithsonian and um, the whole Smithsonian series of museums in in Washington DC allows everything online. So this is the natural history, but they have this air and space, the art gallery, all of those. And you can literally go visit, this is the rotunda here, but then you can go and actually visit in each and every area of the museum and then uh, zoom in and get more information and look at things and walk around just like we did with the Great Wall of China. Notice you're seeing the same sort of um, icons as well as the virtual reality. Uh, get to go visit, you can go visit the whole dinosaur area uh, and really have the kids explore and see things they, they wouldn't normally be able to see. Uh, so these are great to go visit some museums. Uh, you can also travel with another class. I love this with, from Flipgrid, and Flipgrid is free. So Flipgrid is Grid Pals. So if you go to Grid Pals, what Grid Pals allows you to do is actually do the online version of, uh, for example, a pen pal that you normally would do. So this allows your kids and your students to actually see uh, and talk to people from around the world. Uh, what I love about the Grid Pals, let's see if it'll link, it'll link again. What I love about the Grid Pals is um, kids are stuck in a lot of cases inside now, right now, and can't get out and talk to people. And this will allow them to connect. So this is a community for teachers so that you basically look how simple it is. You log into the, the, the educators board, complete your profile and activate your grid pals. And then notice, uh, look at all the communities around the world just on this little simple screenshot. So this is a great one to check out. It's great to see how you basically can just connect with another group of people. Uh, another group of kids, and they can actually talk about 
where they're from and what they're doing. Uh, so have your students do some online activities to reflect and share about their virtual field trips. So they can go online and visit these places, say the museum, say the Grand Canyon, say the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and then have maybe an observation sheet or write a, a, um, something about their experience. So what's great about virtual field trips is it gives them that experience that they can then turn around and use um, to support the content that they're trying to learn about. Uh, another thing is to kind of do some hands-on stuff. I love the idea of sketch noting. I also love the idea of passing the sketch note about something, creating uh, an infographic. And one of my all-time favorites that the kids really love, oh, that one's broken. We'll have to get that one fixed. But uh, it's easy to find a comic strip template anywhere. Basically, um, on the comic books template, what we're, you have the kids visit the location and then actually build a comic strip or graphic novel about their, about their journey, about what they did. Uh, I like the idea of having them build a, a, um, a scrapbook too. Like they actually went on that, that trip. They could take screenshots of where they've been and, and things like that. Uh, in the United States, we have a great system of national and state parks, and pretty much all of them have some type of virtual component. So you could actually even bring a park ranger into your classroom, uh, have them talk uh, to your students about wherever they're at. So here you'll see the national park link. Here's a link for the free park ranger or the virtual field trip. And then, of course, Louisiana State Parks. This is a, a, a great way to promote nature as well. Um, a lot of our students may not even understand the concept between about national parks and monuments and that type of thing. And it's a great way to show how we preserve nature and preserve things that we want to make sure is around for the next generation of kids. Um, this is another one of my favorite ways of uh, having kids uh, – go around and visit places, and that is to find a, uh, a to do a, a hyperdoc. So you can do a hyperdoc on any topic. So basically, it's a way to guide the students through um, some content you want them to explore online so that they're, they're not just free searching and going everywhere. But with the hyperdoc and paired with, like, say, a Google expedition, uh, they really get to go on a field trip. And uh, this is a template that was created to help you make this easier to build your HyperDoc. Um, so if you look here, this template can be, uh, a copy can be made and you can download this onto uh, your own uh, Google Drive. And then it's just basically filling in the, the parts there. Um, the other aspect of the HyperDocs, if you go to this link here, this teaching tech and Twitter, Blog has a great uh, explanation of HyperDocs in terms of how to connect them with Google Expeditions and virtual field trips. They have actual ones that are done already for you. And these are really, really great. And this is where I got the template from. So um, really explore these HyperDocs because especially in virtual uh, learning or distance learning settings, this is a great way to monitor uh, the progress and making sure your students aren't just doing any type of searching without actually um, going to the places where you know they should go. Um, I also love the idea of using some kind of virtual field trips and, and reviewing uh, with a game. So here's a great way to combine virtual field trips with a game. This is from Ditch the Textbook. Um, they Ditch the Textbook is also a great resource in terms of other topics besides just virtual field trips. But on this um, actual blog or, or article, it talks about ways of using like Kahoot, Quiz, Quizlet, and different game show ideas with your virtual field trip has a video for you already set up, shows you some examples of how and what to do and how you can actually put those together based on these different types of gaming activities. The other thing that's great about this is um, this website here 
uh, and I've I've linked all of these into a document or into a, um, an image for you to be able to click on. These are all really great games that this guy, Ryan O'Donnell, put together. And uh, there's a bunch of these games that are all in slide deck form for Google. Uh, Fla uh, Frazzle, The Price is Right, Let's Make a Deal, those type of things. And if you click here, it links back to his um, templates, which you can then uh, make a copy of, put on your own um, actual Google Drive. And notice what it does is it just lays out everything for you. All you have to do is then go in and change your uh the the information in there the questions and you are good to go so uh these are great laid out for you already thanks to ryan o'donnell this has got 10 great games to play so go ahead and uh explore this area here and save that stuff to your uh google drive for for later um so I, I, I like that idea of taking virtual field trips and game shows and that type of thing. Uh, Google Meet is another great way to travel uh, online with your folks. So traveling with Google Meet, here's a blog about uh, Google Hangouts, which is now Google Meet, and 13 virtual field trips that you can take your students on using Google Meet and also maybe communicating with some uh, professionals uh, in the industry. Uh, don't forget to just connect within your community. That's the other thing that a lot of us forget about. Um, even though, especially with COVID, it's hard to bring guests in or anyone into um, our schools right now. So the idea of being able to connect with your community is a great way. You can do it through Google Meet, Skype, Twitter, Facebook. Find yourself a, even a partner class around uh, either your community, in your school, um, or even outside of your community where you share things all year long and are communicating back and forth with each other. One of my favorites, and I think we all love this, Google Expeditions. Google Expeditions is absolutely amazing, VR and AR. Uh, here are some links to be able to explore those. Uh, you can even now explore some of this on your own, uh, meaning your students at home can explore it. So check out the Google Expeditions. Uh, they have a spreadsheet with all those expeditions that are already together. Um, you can really use it on uh, pretty much any Apple or Android device, even if you just have one to show your students. And the, and the actual uh, AR is pretty impressive. Kids get pretty impressed by seeing some of the AR. Uh, like here's a good example of the dinosaur in the classroom, that type of thing. Uh, so check those out and see um, how you can actually explore those. They have some great videos uh, on here to let you really get a good feel for what it does and how it works. Um, so check those out. This is also a great thing. The Google Expeditions is a great thing if you're looking for something to write a grant about or that type of thing. Uh, Google Tour Builder is also another great one. What Tour Builder allows you to do is create your own virtual field trips. You could base it on a, um, I don't know, you could base it on a book. You can base it on them actually doing it like 180, uh, around the world in 180 days. or, or uh, But what it does is it gives you some sample stories to create that they have created. Um, and this site will also give you directions on how to create it on your own, how to introduce it using Google Earth. Um, you can view a tour that's already there. You can create your own tour. Uh, here's another example of Goodall uh, and, and how it clicks through, gives you videos, lays everything out. Really a great way for kids to really explore the world uh, great for, say, a, a world history class, a geography class, or just a class where you're learning about a specific location in a specific area. 
Uh, Google Street View is also another great way. Uh, you can actually bring your students into an area where you're you're talking about or exploring or have them go through and explore. Uh, I like this website because the Street View also uh, shows you how they actually do it and how they, you know, make this available to everyone. So that's a great thing for kids. But then it also takes you into places to actually explore and um, look at the different views and usually from a 360 uh, point of view. Uh, I like this one too, 360 degree cities, uh, because what this one allows you to do is go to locations that maybe kids maybe have never been in New York, uh, obviously never been Mars, um, different places like this, and they're all in 360 view. So you get to get the, get to have the students look around and see things. So if we go over here to Italy, uh, you can get a 360 degree view of different locations. Um, I'm just kind of clicking on things. This is not um, Italy, I don't think. Uh, but they, but you get, oh yeah, Milwaukee. As I was to say, that doesn't look like Italy. Uh, but anyway, you get the idea of the 360 degrees and notice again, your different icons that you could do with VR, that type of thing. You could actually upload things your own self, take the kids on, on different locations. Like here, here they are going on a safari. Um, and I love the idea of being able to just move around, uh, go visit the animals in this case, and then uh, kind of explore a little bit more. YouTube 360 is also a good one and also allows you to um, get a feel for different things. Of course, the, the ever famous 360 ones that you can use with some VR goggles. And of course, it's going to do a an advertisement skip that ad and so the old the old roller coaster one if you've not experienced the roller coaster um 360s or virtual field trips it's really quite interesting uh it's really also um uh, kind of fun to watch kids especially if you have vr glasses with these uh just because you really do get a feel like you're actually on uh that roller coaster and look you can stuff around on the coaster, um, see what you're seeing on the actual roller coaster as it goes down from different angles. And so it's, it's really pretty fun. But also we have some really great 360s and like National Geographic brings in some too as well on their YouTube channel. Uh, for example, the Lions of 360, the underwater parks. And notice these are, are limited to four or five minutes so you're not taking up a whole bunch of time this is also a great way to flip your classroom uh in other words letting them watch the video before you actually uh, discuss it uh in in your virtual classroom okay and patico is a new one i found which is a free one um and it's always supposed to be free, but you can connect with, uh, it's a free resource that allows you to connect with uh, classes and students around the world. Uh, great site. Please check it out. Uh, the video here kind of explains what it does, uh, but it's also basically just a way to virtually bring these kids these kids from around the world and experiences to your students from around the world um and and allow really student voice and so really it's just as simple as you see here sign up for free select your partner class and then connect your classes and then you're ready to go so check out empatico i think you'll be pretty impressed with it uh, I'll, we like to add, we have some 3D printers in our district. We've added some 3D connections. Here's an example. Uh, you can visit the Ford's Theater where Abraham Lincoln was shot. Uh, then you also can visit, you can, we actually downloaded his death mask from the Smithsonian website and printed it out. And so the kids could actually physically hold it 
and see it and then help that sort of helped to uh, promote discussion to see the to see basically maybe exactly what he he looked like other than just a picture and very tactile and it's really really uh was an interesting way of connecting um history and in this case a museum as well as a virtual field trip green screen is great not only does virtual field trips allow you to actually go someplace uh the green screens allow you to bring your students to places so uh i keep thinking about amanda jones in livingston parish who has done i don't know 20 something virtual field trips over the um COVID closure and she's brought her students all over the world uh librarian in livingston check out her stuff she actually has a um an a session with this look you cares and fantastic way and simple way to really jazz up a lesson and and actually bring a a, a different look to a virtual field trip so make sure that you're focusing on what you're learning and that you're not just doing a field trip to do it um having that target during that virtual field trip will really focus you and keep you connected to the content and i think that's the biggest thing virtual field trips we need to remember technology is great but if we're just doing technology because it's fun and it's not connected to something then it's not really what we need to be doing um we really need to be using technology as a tool and not just doing something for technology's sake so uh, as always if you have any questions or there's some issue with the presentation or with the slide deck and you would like to make sure that you get a copy here's my uh information i'm tammy seneca uh direct uh, uh supervisor of technology in west baton Rouge parish schools also look you president uh that's my my uh handle for twitter at tam as sin uh push a lot of this stuff out uh, if you have any questions please don't have a t hesitate to ask thanks for joining thanks for listening and uh as we've been closing out a lot of these webinars stay strong louisiana we got this we're all in this together thank you again uh you are much appreciated for everything that you're doing for our students <laughs>